Welcome back to another video guys here at Hostways Exotics and in today's video we're going to be talking about rattlesnakes. More in particular we're going to be talking about the pygmy rattlesnake. So the pygmy rattlesnake's scientific name is Cistrus malarius and the pygmy rattlesnake is one of the smallest rattlesnakes actually in the world. These guys only reach a total length of around 2 feet and the biggest one recorded in today's time I think has been around 31 inches so getting right there at the 2.5 almost 3 foot range. And the pygmy rattlesnake can be found all across the southeastern coast of the United States all the way up into a little bit of the Midwest area. So out in the wild the pygmy rattlesnake can be found sunbathing or crossing roads and their behavior and temperament can range widely from pretty lethargic and mellow snakes all the way up to pretty aggressive and defensive snakes and the tiny rattle that the pygmy rattlesnake has is pretty much more or less a buzzing sound than a rattling sound because uh, generally these guys rattles are so small they typically break off and they can only normally be heard from maybe a couple feet away so moving on to the care aspect of the video of how I take care of my pygmy rattlesnake I uh, just want to give a little bit of disclaimer these guys are venomous snakes if you guys don't know already and if you're not ready for this kind of thing you know these snakes may not be for everybody so this is more or less for the people that want to go out and maybe venture into the venomous game and this may not be the best starter one but if you do happen to come across one this will probably be the best way to take care of them at least from my experience so always be careful be safe and make sure you use your tools and we'll be going over those in just a little while so for the very first thing what I want to talk about is tools you're going to need to actually take care of your venomous animals and different things to help keep you safe so that way we don't have any accidents and we definitely don't need that to happen so what we got here is a pretty common snake hook uh, I give you guys a good close-up picture of the ones that I'm using I have a couple different sizes of actual snake hooks this one's actually a collapsible I actually like this one a lot this one's a, I use for pretty much all my snakes except for the really big ones because uh, having an adjustable one does seem to come in handy and some of these guys uh, these guys are like three foot feeding tongs I would highly recommend these if you're doing frozen thawed or anything like that with your animals that way you can stay out the strike zone and stay safe guys and that's definitely going to be the main thing I do have another pair of feeding tongs I use these are a little bit smaller uh, these are like zoomed I think but uh, they they work pretty much all the same so these are going to be some of the main tools that you're going to be needing to use to help get your snake out of the enclosure into a holding receptacle or something you're going to be need to be using like that. Uh, most times I do use my pretty big snake hook here. It works out pretty well for me for what I use it for. I would definitely recommend getting one of these because uh, you would not be able to handle a venomous snake without these safely. Some people like to free handle them. I don't really do that just because uh, I want to put extra stress on the snake and or my safety. So moving on to enclosures, uh, what I would recommend for you guys is, as you can see from the enclosures I'm using, I'm using an Exoterra. I tend to like these because these are lockable enclosures. You can put actual chain locks on them or uh, cable locks tend to work really well. So that way you can make sure your animals stay safe. They have lockable tops on them. Uh, you can still use regular aquariums, but I would recommend using a lot of aquarium locks if you're going to be doing that. Uh, but I prefer these or vision cages. Vision cages, you can put the jewelry locks on those keep the glasses from sliding out and they tend to be a more safer enclosure for these guys because at the end of the day uh, other than using your tools the type of enclosure that you're keeping your animals in is going to be the most important thing for keeping venomous snakes so you don't want to have any accidental snakes getting out so if you're looking for a size requirement for the pygmy rattlesnake i would recommend using a 20 gallon long aquarium uh, this would be a sufficient enough size for these guys to move around do their rattlesnake thing and give them enough space to live their best life so moving on to lighting and heating requirements for these guys. So for the pygmy rattlesnake, I would say these are going to be more of a basking species. So I do provide under tank heating with my actual heat mat for these guys and the actual uh, house that you can see back here on the left side. But I also provide a basking lamp for these guys to come out and do some basking if they want to. And normally I keep that temperature around to the upper 80s to the low 90s these because that's going to be what we normally encounter down here in the actual southeastern United States and as always you need to be making sure you're using a thermostat as you can see back here I believe it's set to around 88 89 degrees right now uh, to keep that undertake heat going for him so in case he needs to digest his food up under there at nighttime he still has a nice warm spot 
So moving on to substrate, what I like to do, I like to replicate what the natural environment looks for a lot of my snakes. And down here in the southeastern United States, we have a lot of sand soils and different things like that. So I've mixed together a mixture of cypress mulch, sand, and other things like that to help give it a more natural look with a little bit of pine straw and that kind of stuff. And if you're looking for a more simpler substrate to keep and use for long-term use and easy cleanup, I would definitely recommend just using straight cypress mulch and that'd be perfectly fine for these guys. But I just like to do things a little bit different from time to time and mix things up. So as far as humidity goes, what I would recommend for these guys, since they are from the southeastern United States, uh, they tend to like a little bit higher humidities, and but not exactly wet. So I would recommend like maybe misting the enclosure maybe once or twice a week, making sure you provide a pretty decent sized water bowl and make sure they have clean water at all times as well. Um, but that would be pretty much sufficient for these guys uh, as long as you just make sure you just mess them at least once or twice a week It's normally pretty fine and whenever they seem to go in the shed I normally spray them down a little bit extra just to you know to keep that moisture in there for them Moving on to enclosure setup uh, as you can tell here. I just got like a typical water bowl I got a hide in here. I got a little bit of plant decor, but it's pretty simplistic Nothing too crazy because with these guys you do have to clean out the enclosure So the less stuff is always sometimes better in this case with venomous snakes So it's cool to build a nice naturalistic looking enclosure form But you just have to keep in mind that the fact that you have to do take them out and clean that entire thing at some point So it's a little bit easier just to keep them kind of like how I have them in my my opinion uh, but you know it's totally up to you if you guys would like to pick up any of these items that I'm talking about in this video so far I'll make sure I'll put links down in the description so that way you guys can go check them out and make sure you get some for yourself so moving on to feeding these guys, I would recommend feeding the pygmy rattlesnake at least once a week. Uh, really it's like a seven to 10 day cycle because these guys can get overweight easily. So I would feed them like in a size appropriate mouse. Normally I would say uh, the mouse size needs to be the same width as the snake's body. Generally that's how I size my mice up whenever I'm picking one out to actually give to my animals. And same goes for pretty much most other snakes. Sometimes they can tolerate something a little bit larger than the biggest width of their body but most times I keep it like that. So the pygmy rattlesnake is a pretty awesome little rattlesnake in my opinion, and I love taking care of them. And I hope this video helps out some people that way if you're looking into getting into the venomous hobby or you already have a pygmy rattlesnake, maybe this will help you out with keeping certain things going on with him, make sure they're living healthy and fulfillful lives. So make sure you guys check out the next video. We're gonna be doing one on the water moccasin coming out soon, and we'll talk about a care guide for that video.